A HELOC is an amazingly powerful tool that can be used to build wealth by giving you access to the equity that you already have in your home and allow you to use it as capital in other investments. Some homeowners even use HELOCs for things like home improvements as well as to consolidate consumer debt like credit cards. But a HELOC can also lead you to financial trouble, debt accumulation, and even foreclosure. In this video, I'm gonna go over the hazards and risks that you need to know before applying for a HELOC because it's not all roses, as well as some tips and advice on how to avoid foreclosure if you are in that situation. Let's get to it. What is up everybody welcome back to the channel and if you didn't already know my name is Jay Costa and I'm a real estate investor and agent and builder here in northern New Jersey if you get value out of this video after watching please 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 smash that like button down below and also consider subscribing because we are building a close-knit tight-knit community here of like-minded real estate investors looking to build wealth specifically using a home equity line of credit. So if that interests you, definitely check out our previous videos and think about subscribing down below and hit that little notification bell. I'm bringing you videos once every week as best I can. I appreciate you guys watching. And in this video, instead of going over all of the positives of a home equity line of credit, like a lot of our previous videos here, I wanted to share with you the potential pitfalls and risks that you need to know and be aware of before applying or before using and utilizing your home equity line of credit. Because because let's call it like it is. When you use a home equity line of credit, you're basically treating your home as a quasi ATM machine. Here are some general things you need to know about HELOCs. First, a HELOC is a revolving credit line based on the equity that you have in your home. This means that it's a debt instrument based and secured by your property. Since it's a secured loan, secured to your home, to your property that you own, it does allow it to have lower interest rates than other loan products like a personal loan or credit card. Second, HELOCs are what's called a callable loan product. This means that unlike your standard mortgage that has like a long drawn out set amortization schedule, the HELOC lender that you use can call the full balance, can call back the full balance of what you owe on your HELOC at any time. This usually happens in times of severe market uncertainty when lenders are looking to tighten credit in a downward trending uh, market or economy. This is exactly what happened in 2008 when real estate prices went down by 10% or more in a lot of housing markets across the country. HELOC lenders look to freeze many homeowners' lines of credit that they had in an effort to stop the homeowner from becoming underwater on the property. This gave the lender less of a chance to get their money back in case of a foreclosure. You see, for a loan product that is directly tied to the value of your home and the equity that you have in your home, if the value drops to an amount lower than what the HELOC lender said your house was worth, all of a sudden you owe more on your property than it is worth. And the lender may or may not see that money ever again. This is especially true because HELOCs are usually second lien loans after usually a standard conventional mortgage as the first lien. So in the event of a foreclosure, how it works is the first lien holder always gets priority before the second lien holder. So if you have a $500,000 mortgage and a $200,000 balance on your home equity line of credit and the value of your home drops to say $600,000, that means in the event of a foreclosure, the first lien holder will get their $500,000 back and the second lien holder, the HELOC lender, will only get $100,000 of the $200,000 that they gave to you. These are very general numbers just to give you an idea of how it works if you have two liens on a property and that property gets foreclosed on. So what happens if you find yourself in a situation that you cannot continue to make the HELOC payment? Well, if you can't make your HELOC payments anymore, you are at risk of default and foreclosure. But just because you stop making your HELOC payments doesn't mean they're going to move to a foreclosure process right away. Let me explain. What the HELOC lender does is actually dependent on how much equity they think you have in your home. If you are underwater, meaning your home is worth less than what you owe, the HELOC lender is actually less likely to start a foreclosure process. This is because since the first lien holder, as I said earlier, gets priority over the second lien holder, chances are if they think your home is worth less than what you owe, only the first lien holder is gonna get paid anything. The second lien holder, in this case the HELOC lender, is not gonna get anything in a foreclosure. But if you are not underwater on your home, meaning you still have equity, the HELOC lender is actually more likely to start a foreclosure process because that means they have a better chance of getting money back 
through that process. By the way, side note here, if you have equity still in your home and you can't make HELOC payments, do yourself a favor and either do like some sort of cash out refinance to pay off everything or sell the house. Instead of starting the foreclosure process, the HELOC lender may want to actually sue you personally for the money that's owed. Now, a lawsuit may seem a little less intimidating to you as a borrower than a foreclosure proceeding, but keep in mind, lawsuits can destroy your credit and also cost a lot in regards to legal fees. In addition, depending on where you live, the lender can actually garnish wages in order to get their money back that you owe them. So keep that in mind and avoid this at all costs as well. So as you can see, if you stop making payments on your HELOC, you are in for a world of financial trouble and pain. But HELOC lenders, as well as mortgage lenders in general, do not want to foreclose on your home. I promise you. They would much rather you simply pay back what is owed to them without go having to go through the legal proceedings and foreclosure process that cost them time and money. So if you find yourself in this situation, do yourself a favor and do not delay and call them right away. Little corny. I know. The lenders will most likely be able to work out some sort of repayment agreement with you that works for both of you, works for both parties. They can modify your credit line by terms, by interest rate, by monthly payment, by length of the loan, all in order to keep you afloat. For instance, Bank of America offers HELOC modifications as long as you fit these parameters. One, you've had to have the loan for more than nine months. Two, you could not have received any sort of assistance from them in the past year or twice in the last five years. Three, if you're undergoing financial hardship, you'll have to prove that to them, obviously. Number four, you've had to made at least six payments to them on this loan. And five, all the borrowers on the loan have to agree. But the best way to avoid foreclosure through your home equity line of credit is to simply follow my three rules that I bring up all the time on this channel in regards to HELOC utilization. Number one, the use of your HELOC needs to be short term. A HELOC was not made as a long term product. And the reason for that is because it has a variable interest rate. The interest rate changes on a whim. So don't look at it as just an extension of your mortgage. Don't use it for home improvements. Don't use it to go buy a car or a boat. Use it for short term investments that you know you're going to get your money back and be able to pay it off. Because if you take this money out to put in up to put an addition on your home, let's say, and the rate on the HELOC is 3%, and the addition takes a year and all of a sudden, just like the last 12 months, you see rates go up to 10% in some cases, sometimes more, all of a sudden that payment for the addition of your home could completely sink you. You may not be able, you may not have the cash flow in order to cover the payment. This is how people get in trouble. So I only suggest that you use the HELOC for short term investments. Number two, you need an exit strategy for your HELOC. A perfect example of this is using your HELOC for a fix and flip project. So let's say you buy a piece of property, a house that you're looking to renovate and then sell afterwards. If you want to use the HELOC for the renovation cost of the property, that is the perfect way to use your HELOC as an investment tool in order to build wealth. Because here you have a clear exit strategy when you sell the property when it's complete. This also includes long-term rental properties, but it has to be using the BRRRR method. BRRRR stands for buy, rehab, rent, refinance, and repeat. The key word being there that you're going to refinance. Let's say you buy a property that you're looking to renovate and then keep it and rent it out. The exit strategy in that situation would be the refinance at the end instead of the sale at the end like the flip. And number three, never take money out of your HELOC that you don't have somewhere else to pay it back in a worst case scenario. This may seem tough to avoid when you're just starting out, but don't take the bait, don't over leverage yourself and be smart with how you use your HELOC funds. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this. If you have any experience going through a foreclosure, especially with a HELOC involved or a second lien or a second mortgage, drop a comment in the comment section down below and let us know your experience. And let us also know what you do to avoid these situations and how you use your HELOC to avoid these situations. I appreciate you guys tuning in and I will see you next time.